Hey teachers, this is an extra exciting video because my newest children's book, a geology activity book for kids, has just been released last week. So to celebrate, I'm sharing three of the geology science experiments from this book with you. Now the great thing about each of these experiments is that they require minimal prep work, minimal materials, but they are awesome for driving home concepts about fossils, the rock cycle, weathering, and erosion. A geology activity book for kids is actually the third children's book that I have written. I've also written a women's history book and I wrote another geology book you might have seen me post about on my Instagram. But this book is different from the previous geology book because the previous geology book was written for an older age group and therefore it had a lot more written information. It had a lot more about the history of the earth and things for students or kids to investigate and research on their own. Now this new geology book is exactly what it says. It's an activity book. So each of the sections, there's 19 sections all together, and each one includes a short paragraph about a geology topic, then five fun facts about that topic. Then you're going to find an activity that kids can do inside of the book. It could include something like a word search, a crossword puzzle, or a coloring activity. And then last, each section ends with an easy science experiment or activity that can be done at home or in the classroom. Now I know that many of my followers are upper elementary teachers because that's primarily what I do is upper elementary. But I want you to know that even if you are an upper elementary teacher, there's still things for you and your students inside of this book. I was thinking of upper elementary teachers when I wrote the five fun facts for each section and the experiments and activities. What are simple things that you could be doing in your classroom to model and explain concepts for students. So there's still things in here for you too. If you're interested in learning more about a geology activity book for kids, I have provided the link down in the description where you can find the book on Amazon. Now, when I was writing this book, I worked really hard on the experiment and activity parts of each section. I mean, I worked hard on the whole book, but I really put a lot of thought into those activities because I wanted to create activities that were both engaging and meaningful, really driving home those geology concepts that you need your students to learn. So I want to go ahead and share three of those activities with you right now. Okay, the first activity that we are going to do is a simple activity that shows how fossils are formed. For this activity, you are going to need a couple of things. You're going to need some bread. You are going to need some type of gummy. I've got gummy worms, but I've also noticed that you can find gummy bugs, gummy dinosaurs, just about any gummy thing you can think of. So you can get creative with what gummies you use for your fossils if you want. You're also going to need some plastic wrap and a couple of heavy books. All right, so let's go ahead and walk through this activity. All right, so for this activity, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna work on top of a piece of plastic wrap. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and lay a piece of this out. You wanna make sure that your piece is a little bit longer on both sides because you're actually gonna wrap this up around the bread. Now, the next thing that you are going to do is you're gonna use several pieces of bread. Now you can create as many layers as you want with the bread. I usually recommend using anywhere from eight to 10 pieces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay our first two pieces down. Oop, I ripped that one just a little bit, but that's okay. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to put two to three gummy worms on top of the bread. And like I said, you can use any type of gummy here that you want. I'm gonna do two here. Then I'm going to layer on two more pieces of bread. And I'm going to layer a few more gummy worms. We'll do three this time. All right, I'm gonna do this one more time. We'll go ahead and speed it up. Last, you're gonna end by sticking one, I'll just do one piece on the top, but one to two pieces on the top 
I also apologize, I've got a little bit of mold on top of the bread. This is old, we don't actually eat bread in our household. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up now like we talked about. Just like that, it does not need to be fancy. And then we're gonna stack those two heavy books. Actually, it can be any number of books, but you just wanna stack a few heavy books on top of this. Just like that. And I may need to work on balancing it a little bit. But then what you're gonna do is you're gonna let this sit for a little bit. I usually say let it sit one to two hours, and then you're gonna come back and check on this. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna set this off to the side and we're gonna go through those other two activities that I talked about and then we'll come back to this one at the end of the video. All right, so while that's sitting, we're gonna go ahead and move on to a rock cycle activity. And I love to do this activity with kids. It is so much fun. Now in the geology activity book for kids that just came out, I only show how to do the sedimentary rock portion in the book just due to word count limits and spacing within the book. But I also have a geology unit in my teacher store, which includes detailed lesson plans, worksheets, experiments, digital activities, assessments, pretty much everything you need to teach about geology. And in that unit, I include this complete experiment that I'm going to show here. So all that you need for this are some Starburst and a paper plate. Now I recommend that you use three Starburst and that you select different colors. So you can see here that I have different colors that I'm going to use. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna speed this up a little bit while I pull the paper off of each of these. off the three of these and the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create sedimentary rocks with these starbursts so what we need to do there's a couple of ways you can do this if the starbursts are soft you can have your students kind of pull them apart into pieces like I'm doing now you could also use like a plastic knife or something like that and have kids cut them but if they just kind of work them in between their hands you will see that it gets soft and breaks into pieces now, as students are breaking these into pieces, you wanna make sure that you're talking about how sedimentary rocks are actually formed. So you wanna talk about weathering and erosion and how it is breaking down other rocks and soil and all kinds of different things into pieces. And then eventually, these are all going to stick together to form new rocks. Now, I will speed this up just a little bit while we tear this last one, and then I will show you what we're gonna do. There we go, that last one was a little bit harder to break up than the other ones, but like I said, if kids are having trouble with it, just kind of hold it in between their hands and use that heat from their hands to make it a little bit softer. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and stick all of our sediments together. So what you'll do is students will just take them and kind of just push them all together. Now you don't want them to roll it just yet, we're gonna do that with the metamorphic rocks but you can see that I've just kind of stuck them all together here. And I'll hold this under the other camera so that you guys can see. But you can see that you can see each of the different bits of starburst. So it's kind of like getting to see each of those different bits of sediments. All right, so now we're practicing the rock cycle. So we are going to take this sedimentary rock and we're gonna turn it into a metamorphic rock. Now you'll remember that metamorphic rocks form with heat and pressure. So this is when we're actually gonna roll it. You're gonna have your students kind of put it in between their hands, they can push on it, they can kind of roll it, but they're gonna use heat and pressure from their hands. If they wanna sit it down on the um, plate and kind of roll it and press it around that way, they can do that. But give your students or kids several minutes to kind of push it together. We don't necessarily want to see them as separate sediments anymore. We want them to kind of use that heat and pressure like we're talking about to melt together. So we'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit while I continue working these together. So now you can 
kind of see, it's not really those individual sediments anymore. I can hold it up closer under this camera and you can kind of see their swirls and different things, but they're a lot more blended together now. So now you know the last rock that we're going to do is an igneous rock, which is going to be formed with heat. You know, a lot of times um, these can also be formed inside the earth. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit it on the paper plate and I'm gonna actually put this in the microwave. Now I recommend that you start with about 45 seconds to a minute and you work up from there. All microwaves are different. You don't want any accidents in the microwave. So I'm gonna take this to my microwave and I'll be back in just a second. All right guys, so I have just pulled this out of the microwave. I'll get close so that you can see. And you will see that it has now melted. As soon as you pull it out of the microwave, it's actually going to start to harden as well. And you'll notice it's probably a little hard to see right now, but when I pulled it out of the microwave, it was all bubbly and those little bubbles are still there. And that's what students need to know about igneous rocks is oftentimes they do have those little bubbles from when it uh, turns to liquid and then hardens again. So this will actually start to harden very quickly and then you can talk to your students about the process of how igneous rocks are formed. But that is the process of doing the rock cycle with Starburst. All right, so our last activity that I'm going to show you is a very, very simple way to model weathering and erosion that is included in my newest book. Now for this activity, you are only going to need a paper plate, you're going to need some sugar cubes, some water, and an eyedropper. Now you can use as many sugar cubes as you want with this. Um, I recommend using roughly 10, and what you're going to do is you're gonna instruct your students to build a mountain with the sugar cubes. All right, so that looks about right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly build a mountain with these. Okay, there we go. I ended up pulling a few more sugar cubes out while I did that just to make a complete mountain. And then what you're going to do from here is so simple. You're gonna take your eyedropper, um, you are going to fill it with water, and you are going to have students slowly pour or drop the water over their mountain. This is representing like rain or some kind of precipitation and they'll probably have to fill the eyedropper several times to complete this activity. But eventually, what's gonna start to happen is that you're gonna start to see these sugar cubes dissolve, you're gonna start to see the mountain change form. But like I said, don't be worried if your students have to fill their eyedropper several times. That is very, very normal with this activity but we're just gonna keep doing it until we start to see some changes in our mountain. But as we can already see, my mountain has changed quite a bit since we started. And so this is just a great opportunity to talk about how precipitation uh, changes landforms. All right, so those are the three activities, but we're not done yet because we've got to go back to that first activity and check on our fossils. So I have gotten out that bread with the book stacked on top of it, and we are going to go ahead and take a peek. Now, as you start to look at this, this is a great time to talk about how those fossils form um, in layers, how animals and plants die, and then layers of the earth pile up on top of them and we still can see bits of them that are left behind. So you can see, we'll go ahead and pull this off. And then we can slowly pull back each of our layers at one time. And what's really cool, we can already see it in our very first layer, we can see left behind the markings from those worms just like how fossils are left behind. So if I pull back another layer slowly, oh, there they are. Once again, you can see those markings that are left behind. So you can go through, like I said, pulling back each layer and really discussing how those fossils are formed, particularly in sedimentary rocks that are 
uh, piling up on top of each other. All right, so there you have it, guys. Those are three geology activities and experiments from my new book, Geology Activity Book for Kids. Like I said, I have linked the Amazon link to this book down in the video description. All of the activities we've shown today are inside of this book along with many others and on the page activities that we've talked about. That rock cycle activity is also found in my geology unit, which I have linked down in the description as well. So I hope that you have enjoyed these activities. I hope your kids and your students enjoy these activities as well. And until next time, happy teaching.